the stocks push to the previous close and fail. So I'm basically shorting that previous close fail, thinking that's gonna come right back down. A lot of people think this is easy, but it's really hard, man. Yeah. But the longer you do it, the easier it gets. That's definitely a fact, bro. Right. No, and this guy just died. What are you doing today? I don't know bro, we had to change my solo cups. My girlfriend's banging my head, she says I'm gonna get cancer if I keep drinking it out of the red solo <laughs> cup. So I bought this shit on Amazon and I mean so far we're green, so let's see what happens. Well you bought them in color red and they came- I bought them in red and they sent me the wrong ones. They sent me this tan color. Yeah. I mean, I don't it's know. like a vanilla. Yeah, it's whack. But <laughs> well, here we are bro. Let's hope it's good luck man. So we have two trades so far bro. So trade number one is this SILO. Shot right up from 480 to 680. I basically shorted it after it topped out, made some money, reshorted it, and then it just completely cratered without me. So uh -huh. made about a thousand dollars on this trade. And this AMPX here is the one we're scaling into right now. This stock, basically, I'm just shorting. So this stock ran up yesterday. Ran up yesterday, ran up yesterday, ran up yesterday, pulled back. So now I'm just shorting the bounce. Oftentimes, this is the previous close line. Oftentimes, the stocks push to the previous close and fail. So I'm basically shorting that previous close fail, thinking that's gonna come right back down. I have about a 1091 average and it's at 1091. So let's see what happens here. And these are just runners in the morning, huh? Yeah, so it's AMPX was a runner from yesterday. Went from six to 1150 and pulled back. Pulled back to nine bucks. So it's pretty much bouncing to $11 on air. Bouncing on air. Wow. So oftentimes these stocks push to the previous close and pull back. So that's the trade I'm taking. I'm shorting the previous close here. So pretty much on this one, bro, we're looking for a pullback to VWAP if we're gonna get it. So we're in two trades before nine o'clock. That uh, doesn't happen every day. So that's not happen every day. So basically just tells you what, what the opportunity is for the day, right? Yeah, let's see what's gonna happen, bro. We don't know. It's, it's been a really slow market lately. There hasn't really been much money to be made. So we're pretty much just trying to squeeze water out of a rock these days. Yeah, and having like 12, 13 uh, trading days under my belt now. Yeah, what do you Looking, think? I'm how's seeing, man. I'm, see, I'm seeing how, how hard it is to scrap a couple bucks, man. Yeah, <laughs> Some of these days. It's not easy, bad. bro. It's not easy. A lot of people think this is easy, but <clears throat> it's really hard, man. Yeah. But the longer you do it, the easier it gets. That's definitely a fact, bro. Right. I'm telling you, the longer you do it, the easier it gets. Like, for example, bro, this setup of shorting the red to green resistance, I was, it's a high probability setup. It's a high probability setup because the stock already went from nine. It went from 9 to 11. So it's a little bit extended and it's at the previous day's close. So that gives me a good opportunity for a fail. If this stock was at 9 bucks and the previous close was 9.20, it wouldn't work as well because it's not also extended. So it's extended and it's a previous close rejection. Well, you never know, bro. This shit just may reclaim and just go straight up. So for the new traders or the guys that don't really trade uh, pre-market, would you say there's more opportunity sometimes? Uh, you know what it is, bro? Pre-market is a lot riskier. Pre-market is a lot riskier and I don't recommend it for trade like most traders. And I give myself a pre-market size. So if I'm trading pre-market, I limit myself to like 2,000 shares. I don't want to use more than 2,000 shares because that's like the size for me that I don't get like emotional. So in case right. things go wrong, it doesn't screw up my day because what ends up happening is you trade pre-market, you lose pre-market, and then you're just like on tilt in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And you start playing a game trying to get some money back. Around, you start playing around. Right. But this AMPX is the same trade I would have taken at the open so if it if this did the same thing at the open where it just pushed and rejected the red to green line i would have taken that same trade so i'm pretty much pre-market taking the same trades i was take i would take at the open so let's see we're coming right back down. so now we're basically looking for a death candle on the VWAP here huh we would love a death candle but just in case we don't get one i'm gonna take a little bit of profits Jeez, that was all pre market, huh? Yeah, I shorted at 650, I got out at six bucks, and now it's at five bucks. Oh. <laughs> Sucks. But that's trading, bro. That's yep. trading. What's going on right now? This AMPX was trying to dip and it just kind of pushed back. What we want to see here, bro, is we want to see <clears throat> sellers come in and just jam it right back down. We want to see sellers coming right at that red to green line. You know what I'm saying? Right. We want sellers at 11 bucks. So hopefully, hopefully the sellers come in and then it goes craters down. This is 
why pre market is very dangerous, bro. It's very like the moves happen very fast. You know? Choppy, right? Choppy. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm into my slow stocks these days. Yeah, I mean, George has found that he likes the low hanging fruit stocks, so that's where he's focusing. Yeah, I like, um, Tom's been putting out some pretty good stocks, so that's a. Uh, yeah, Tom I don't know, made a lot of money trading low hanging fruit, so that's where he focuses. All right. Okay, we failed. That's really good. Ideally, this thing goes under 1070. 1070 has been holding it up so far. Yeah, we do see some here. Yeah, 1065, but 1070 is a lot cleaner. Anything could happen right now. It's still early pre market. There's 30 minutes until the market open. Everything is a lot choppier. So That's why can you call this like zombie hour? No, it's just called pre market, bro. Pre market is just choppy. It's right. just choppy. That's why I don't use a lot of size pre market. That's why I don't get too aggressive pre market. That's why I don't like look for home runs pre market. I'm just trying to take a small scalp. Right. Thought process is red to green is going to fail. Red to green is still failing. So as long as it keeps failing, then I keep waiting. Right. That trade is it hitting that line and failing. That's the exact trade. Right. It also helps that it's bouncing from $9 to $11. It helps that $11 is a whole dollar. Like there's a lot of signals here that I'm seeing that are telling me that this is a good trade. It bounced $2 a share from nine to 11. It's failing the red to green line and the $11 whole dollar is failing. And it seems like you can, like, you know, all the boxes check you could size in, but again, it's pre-market, so... If it wasn't pre-market, I'd be sizing it. But yes, it checked all the boxes. Just right. checking the boxes. 1065, 1065. Oh. Come on, 1063, 1060, 1056. Oh. What's he like to see, guys? Bro, we're over here scrapping for hundreds of dollars, bro. We're fucking <laughs> scrapping. <laughs> We have a new stock running, right. TTOO, and with a new stock running, what happens to our old stock? So what people do, bro, is when a new stock runs, they sell the old one to buy the new one. Right. So to me, bro, this is a perfect, that's perfect timing. Look, 905 is when this moved, 905 is when that moved. There's a concept we call money flow. Money flow happens when one stock is hot, a new stock shows up, and money flows out of the old hot stock into the new hot stock, which caused the first stock to go down. So that's kind of what, that's a big concept that we talk about. So Does that have to do with like the hot chick? Yeah, so the hot chick rotates from this stock to this stock. Right. And that causes money to be moved from this stock to this stock. You know me and my hot chicks, bro. I'm not into the hot chicks anymore. George got burned by one hot chick and he says he's never trading one again. Give me the ugly chick, bro. <laughs> Let's see if you listen, bro. <laughs> Give me the fat chick, bro. <laughs> so I have an order at 1042 to cover some. It hit 1041 the lowest, so. If this was market open, it'd already be down, but just because pre market's still choppy. Right. And what's gonna happen, bro, is I'm gonna get out and then it's gonna tank. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Also, have you noticed that the days that the market's hot, uh, in general, like it's easier or harder to trade? Um, hmm. So what I like, bro, is I like when the market is super, super hot, and then the next day, people think it's gonna remain hot, and the opposite ends up happening. So let me explain. When the market is hot, people are like, all right, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this, because everything's going up, everything's going up, everything's going up, but that doesn't happen forever. So I like, when the market is hot and then the next day it kind of cools off because people buying, buying, buying stops working. Right. So the first day the market's hot is always more difficult than the days that come after it. Gotcha. As a, as a new trader, I also noticed that um, the first five, 10 minutes is like extremely important, man. I mean, like yeah. uh, when the market opens. Yeah. If you miss some of the opportunities, I just feel like it, it just dwindles from there. You know what it is? The first five to 10 minutes is when humans are involved. After that, the robots take over. And when the robots take over, it's a lot harder to make money. Right. So you're in the first like five to 15 minutes, you're pretty much competing with other humans. And then throughout the rest of the day, bro, the robots take over and you can't beat them. Right. You know? I think like 90% of all trading is all like robotic trading. It's all wow. the robots like playing with each other. That's pretty insane. It's nuts. 
All right, Doc, so it's like 15 minutes to open. Yep. Uh, my question to you is, let's say I'm alone, right? And I'm trading and I have 15 minutes left and there's some fast movers. There's, there's, you know, we're talking about the chat and people are identifying these, uh, these new stocks, you know, these new stocks that are on the watch list. If I'm alone, I don't have the chat open. I don't, how do I, you know, how do I find these, these new movers on my own? Yeah, so there's a couple things, bro. Number one is I always suggest being an MIC because we have 2,000 traders watching all different stocks, right? So you have 2,000 eyeballs, well, 4,000 eyeballs, because two do, but you have 4,000 eyeballs staring at stocks all day long and gathering information and helping you out. So doing it alone, bro, it just doesn't make sense. Yes, there's ways to do it. Yes, there's some things you could find, but doing it alone doesn't make sense when you have a team of people that are looking for the same thing together. So for me, bro, I'm never gonna be trading alone. I'm never trading alone because together we're generating ideas and maybe I see something that you miss. Maybe you see something that I miss. So having a team helps you. It's like in basketball, bro. You wanna have a team around you to help you. You know, you need the point guard, you need the center, you need the forward, you need everything to help you win the game. In trading, the more of a team you have to generate ideas gives you a better probability to win the game, you know? That makes sense. Yeah, just put your brains together and just... Uh... Plus, bro, joining MIC is cheap. You make the money back in like a month or two. And that, that education will last you a lifetime because when the entire world was shut down, when COVID happened, when the entire world was shut down, one thing was open and that was the stock market. Mm. Forever, bro, the stock market is not going to go away. Yeah. So this is a business that will be around for the rest of your life. Whereas like Amazon drop shipping, this, that is not going to be around, bro. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you would rather invest your time and invest your money into a business that is going to be here literally till the end of time. And even when the entire world is shut down, this business is still operating. Exactly. You know what, to your defense, I see, I saw it firsthand, you know, uh, a couple of days ago when I was trading, someone said, hey, you know, it's getting towards zombie hour. This might run up. I think it was ATXI. Yep. You know, I was shorting it and I got fucking burnt, but. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes where you lose track of time, you lose track, oh wait, it's 10.30 a.m., it's zombie time, maybe right. you should stop trading. But if you're alone, you're like, oh, let me just Yeah, up. yeah, you know? A lot of reminders and helpers and then the chat. Bro, this business is already hard enough alone don't make it even harder on yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, ever since that big loss day, every time someone says something in the chat, I'm just like, hey, just but get out of here. I'm you like, know oh. what it is, bro? You need to be able to have those losses to not do them again. Right. Or else you're never gonna learn. Exactly. All right, the first couple of days I traded, I was like green all the days. I was, uh, you know, small green days. I was all, all happy and on my high horse and then. You could make money a hundred days in a row, bro, but that one day you might lose it all. Yeah, and I told you, I have like 15 days of trading. I am green 13 days, but I am in the negative because of those two days of how bad they were. Yeah. Still waiting on the yeah, what, we, yeah, what are we doing over here? That's, that's pre-market, bro. She's not moving. I'm like, yeah, just playing a low game. Again, huh? It might just shoot up at the open, so I'm not sure yet. So I guess the plan would be shoot up. It You, you can, re, you can uh, reshort. And then if it just dies, you, you just make your money and walk. Yeah. There's two potential options. Potential one is it shoots up, or potential two, it shoots down. If it shoots down, exit the position. If it shoots up, depending on how much it shoots up, you know, we'll either add or exit. All right. So I know, um, like looking at TTOO right here. Yeah. Um, so that candlestick, so that that point on top is like the high that it reached. Mm -hmm. And then um, obviously, the the middle part the, the bulkier part is like where it was all like the whole time so like some, like like this whole thing it was like in that one minute yeah. it was here right yep how does something like this, like how this does was a like pump happen it was just a pump it was just a quick it pump? Was a pump that failed oh my god <laughs> still rejecting this 11 but now it's starting to get really annoying so i'm not sure 
See, I guess you have the line at 11-2 rather than like 11-3. Where yeah, the I tip have eleven. Is. I, I have eleven two because that's where it was yesterday. Okay. So I'm using yesterday's line. Gotcha. So technically it broke the high yesterday. This was the high. Eleven fifty was the high. Okay. So eleven twenty was like that lower high. Cool. All right, we got one minute until the open. This AMPX has been playing games for the last hour. <laughs> hmm. So pretty much, I I don't really know what the stock is gonna do yet. It might just push and fail. It might just tank. Um, if it kind of just pushes, I'm gonna give it a second to see what it does. But if it just tanks, I'm gonna take a little bit of profits and call it a day. Because it's still rejecting that red to green line. You know what I'm saying? Like the trade thesis is still intact. It's just taking a little bit longer. You know, I tried to cover that dip earlier, but I was one penny away and it just kind of reversed. So just patiently wait to see what this does. As a new trader, I realized fantasy orders are something nice that I gotta start doing. You should. It's like fishing orders. You just like throw your fantasy order. Dude, out. Fantasy order right, like right there. You're talking about, you know, like. Exactly. You would have caught that. Yeah, but it hits, it hits. Yeah. Come on, go down, cuz go down. Come on. Bro, I don't even have any size, so I shouldn't even get a f excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to make like 300 yeah. bucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually I see, I see an extra zero there, but 20,000 shares, not 2,000. I should. What's gonna happen is it's gonna go to 15 if I do that. Uh huh, here we go. Oh wow. Covered some? Oh man. So that was a trade, bro. What happened here, I thought was gonna happen here. <laughs> right. But look, it's pretty good, dude. No, you can't. Yeah, you can't beat that. Uh, 2,500 so far, and we've got still plenty of time. And besides for the pre-market, you did any? What is it? Three, nine, thirty-four. <laughs> Let's see. This bitch is going down lower. Oh wow. Yeah, I told you, bro. I get out, it's gonna go down. That's the death I've ever seen one. I don't think about like what goes behind these stocks. Like this is an actual company with like possibly people working for this company, and, <laughs> and it's just like and that. it's just. Tanking, dude. AMPX is a industrial company, one billion dollar industrial company. What? Yeah, some. Uh, you're sure this. Nice money, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for the the hot month of November to come. I hope so, bro. I hope it's hot. Cause right now, shit sucks. Yeah. So this AMPX collapsed. If we could get a bounce towards like 1040 or 1060, we'll try to reshort it. But I don't really know what the hell's gonna happen. Right. Not much else is moving today, huh? Nothing more. What's the key thing on slow days like this, Alex? Just not doing anything. A lot of times, you're on slow days, you start to step out of your comfort zone, you start to trade random stocks, and then you end up losing on the random stocks, and you're like, shit, if I just didn't trade, I wouldn't have lost. That's right. the hardest part is not trading, which is really hard right now. And it shouldn't be, because I'm already up a decent amount of money, but I want more. Yeah. I want more. Such a slow day today. I don't know what the hell to do. I feel like if I stay in front of the screens, I'm gonna lose money. So I just wanna walk away for like a minute, check up on the car wash guy, see what he's up to, and then maybe come back. It's like 20 degrees outside right now. <laughs> oh, Bowser does it, man. All day, you just f around. Yeah, Bowser's a robot, bro. Bowser's a robot. Yeah, I swear. You see it, bro. You see it now. Because you used to see it and not understand the trades. Yeah. Now you understand the trades. Nah, bro. The Utah trip that we took, it was unbelievable. Yeah. He's in the car with the laptop. He's like, I just made like 225. Like, yeah. just in like, in like two minutes, I was like, He's oh. He's got a portable hotspot in his yeah. backpack. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> He's like eating something while yeah. trading and just like yeah. laughing, looking at the scenery. It's unbelievable. <laughs> dangerous thing is like trying to f not force a trade yeah I have the itch bro I have the itch big time <laughs> now I can understand cuz oh, I started trading you don't want to just sit there and do nothing I know. but it's like you also don't want to lose money <laughs> well I also recorded these trades so like I'm just gonna do like a voiceover over them okay that should take some time
Alright, so it's 10 a.m. here. You know, there's really not much trades left, so I think I'm gonna call it a day, George. You know, we're up about $2,500 today. Not bad. Yeah. You know, two trades. SILO shorted here, got out here, tanked more. AMPX shorted here, got out here, tanked more. <laughs> so my entries are good. My exits need a little bit of work, but if that's my biggest problem, that I'm not making enough money, that is not too bad. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much the day. I mean, some days are slow, some days are hot. Some days the car wash guy comes right before the market open. Hmm. But other than that, pretty much just gonna call it a day here, bro. The like green is good, bro. Green is good. Just take the money and run. Let's go. Till next time. Yep.